our prayer is often dull because there is so little earnestness in it. We pray as if no one is listening. We pray as if nothing will happen. We pray as if nothing were at stake. We pray without vim or vigor, without passion, without purpose. We will sing the Michigan State fight song with greater enthusiasm than we will pray. And we will have greater confidence that if perhaps we cheer on our team in the arena, it will give them some inspiration. More confidence in that than if we would pray, God may answer. We pray to pass the time. Yes, that's what we do. We're Christians. We got a service, we pray. We pray to pass the time, not to pull down blessings from heaven. Like Jacob, I will not let you go until you bless me. Are you ever, are you often, are you rarely gathered together with God's people for the purpose of prayer? Surely there are reasons to pray. You just have to look at your life, some of you, your marriage or your health, your concerns in the country or the world or your friends, or our missionaries, or this body, conflict in your life, your work, your unemployment. There's no shortage of reasons to pray. So we must ask, if we are not often gathered together earnest in prayer, we must consider why not. Is it because we do not have great needs in this body? Is it because we do not have fears and sins that beset us? Is it because there is no opposition in the world which threatens to snare us, or there's no devil on the prowl to destroy us? Is it because we are sure of ourselves, self-reliant, in no need of divine assistance? Or is it because we consider help from God to be so negligible that it is not worth our time to ask for it? Do we not think God listens when we pray? Do we not think He cares? Do we not realize that He is more than able to give us grace to help in our time of need? Why do we not gather to pray? What is the reason for our apathy? Do we not see the critical importance of prayer? Have we forgotten what a privilege we have in prayer? Have we no confidence in the power of prayer? Do we take the example of the early church to be unreachable or impractical in our busy day? Have we no sense for the blessings that await us in prayer and through prayer? Have we lost sight of the great glory that God receives when His people humble themselves and pray? Who knows what new victories we would experience, what divine favor would be ours, what surprising providences we would enjoy if earnest prayer were made to God by the church, and by this church. Brothers and sisters, do you believe that God stands ready willing and eager to hear us, eager to help us. His ways are not always our ways. He does not always answer as we would expect Him to. But His love never fails, and His mercies are new every morning, and there is one at the right hand of the Father who intercedes for us and will lend His might to our puny prayers if we would but pray. He who is omniscient delights to hear our requests. He who is omnipotent acts when we call upon Him. He who is omnipresent promises to be near to us when we pray. Why do we not pray more? 
Why is the American church, with all of her blessings and all of her strengths, not particularly known around the world as a praying church? It's likely because of all of our blessings and all of our strengths and all of our resources. What would it mean for us to be a church often in earnest prayer? What might you and I have to rearrange in our lives? Not just to have a personal quiet time, but to have much corporate time of prayer. What are you doing tonight when this church will gather to pray? What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer.